Hey everyone, I'm Nick, and welcome to version 2 of C++ Crash Course. So in this episode of the series, we're going to be talking about inheritance. Now what inheritance allows us to do is build a class or struct based on another class or struct. And this is really useful when we want to reuse, say, data and methods uh, that we've already implemented. So instead of implementing them, you know, say multiple times across a number of different classes, um, I can go ahead and implement them a single time inside of a base class or base struct and inherit them inside of derived classes or derived structs. So let's go ahead and get started and we'll open up this inheritance.cpp. And first we'll go ahead and implement our base struct here. So here I've got my struct called parent. I have a defaulted constructor and then I have a custom constructor here that takes one std string. I've got a data member, so a single data member here um, that's a std string called name and then a single method that's just for printing out the name. So it says my name is, and then whatever the std string is. Now, let's say that I want to inherit from this uh, struct here. So I want to reuse um, the std string name and reuse this method for printing out that name. So down here in my child struct, I'll go ahead and say here, I want to build a new struct or, or you know make the blueprint for a new struct called child, but I want to inherit from parent here. So I have this colon and then the name of you know, the struct that I want to inherit from. So when I do this, I end up inheriting the std string name, and then I also inherit this uh, method for printing out that name, right? So I'm reusing it. And if I implemented another struct, you know, someplace else um, that was also based on parent, it would also, you know, inherit that name and this method here. So down here, right, let's say I want to build on top of parent, right? So I can specialize here. Um, in this child struct. So I'm going to add another std string called favorite toy, and then another method for printing out what that toy is. Now, one thing that looks a little bit different is this constructor right here. So now we have a constructor for child that takes um, two parameters. So that's not really anything new. The new part here is this initialization list. So here we've got uh, this initialization list that says, you know, parent in right here. So what exactly is this doing? So before we create our child um, struct here, we'll want to initialize or usually want to initialize whatever our parent struct is or what we're inheriting from, right? So, you know, we just inherited, you know, maybe a bunch of data members and methods here, and maybe I want to initialize those data members as they would have been if I just created the struct parent. So I can directly select which constructor that I want to call um, here. So in this case, I'm passing in a name and a toy here into the child constructor. So I can say, okay, I want to initialize parent with the name that's being passed in here when I'm making the child struct. Um, so what happens if we say, you know, we don't specify anything down here, right, in this initialization list. You know, we just leave it completely empty, right? What ends up happening? Well, in this case, the default constructor ends up being called. So the one that we've defaulted right here, the one that takes no parameters, that will end up being called instead, right? So um, this is just a way that, you know, if we want to reuse how our parent struct say gets initialized, we can select which constructor we want to use before our child constructor actually executes. It's also a useful thing if we say have uh, constant data members. So if we want to have a constant data member, right, and we want to base it on an input value, right, we've got a problem here because we can't assign to a constant data member. So in this case, you'll see we'll end up getting an error because inside of our constructor, we're trying to assign to name here, but name is const. So we can actually just move this out and we can say, okay, let's initialize it inside of our initialization list. So here, let's say we'll build name based on this parameter in, right? And you see it gets rid of that error. So if we want to have a struct that say has constant data members, we can use that initialization list for this as well. Okay, so we can go ahead and leave it like this. Um, and let's go ahead and look down here um, at the rest of our main function. So here you'll see the first thing we're going to do is, you know, let's kind of study what the size is going to be for our different objects. So first of all, first of all, you know, we've got a single data member inside of uh, parent and we add another data member inside of child. So, you know, that data member is a std string. So what's the size of a std string? Now in modern versions of GCC, it's 32 bytes. In older versions, I believe it's eight bytes. Um, and in uh, Clang with libc++, I believe it's um, 24 bytes. So that's something that can change depending on uh, what system you're running on or compiling with. Um, but in this case, it's going to be 32 bytes. And then when we go ahead and print out the size of our parent struct, we'll end up seeing 32 bytes. But that should make sense, right? Because the only thing that we're actually storing inside of our parent struct is a single std string here. Right? Um, we're not storing these methods, right? These methods end up just looking like functions as we've seen before 
um, when everything gets compiled down. So the only actual space that's being taken up here is this stood string. Now, uh, the next thing we'll do is print out the size of child. Well, child has its own uh, st uh, string here, this favorite toy. But we have to remember, we're also inheriting that string from struct. So we're also inheriting this name right here. So the size of child here will end up being 64 bytes because it has the 32 um, bytes for the um, the child stood string and the one we're inheriting from the parent, that other stood string. Um, now there's some other discussions that we can have and we'll have a video on that later on, you know, how you know we actually calculate or how uh, the size of our structs or classes get calculated uh, because it will depend based upon this thing called padding and alignment and also whether or not we have these things called virtual functions which we'll discuss um, you know in the context of um, inheritance and polymorphism later um, but for now right in this very simple case right we'll see we're just inheriting the size and we're adding on the size of our child struct that we're inheriting or yeah, or, or base struct or parent struct that we're inheriting from. We'll just tack on that size into our child struct. Now let's go ahead and just create instances of our struct. So we'll go ahead and create one for um, the parent and we'll just initialize it with a name, say Yale Pat, right? Famous computer architect. And then we'll create a child struct and we'll do the same thing. So another computer architect here, we'll go ahead and uh, pass in a string, uh, Doug Berger here, and uh, like I said, another architect, and that will end up getting passed inside of this initialization list to our uh, parent constructor. And then we'll go ahead and pass in you know, his favorite toy, being an architect, we'll say his favorite toy is an FPGA. And then you see down here, we'll go ahead and print out the methods, so or print out using the methods. So we'll print out from the parent struct, and then we'll print out the name and the toy from the child struct. Now, one other thing to note here is that if we try to print out the toy from the parent struct, right, we get an error, right? Because that method for, you know, print toy doesn't belong to the parent struct. It belongs to the child struct. We're specializing on that parent struct when we create this child struct here, right? So we're, we're inheriting downwards, not upwards. All right, so that's going to go ahead and do it. Let's go ahead and run this um, example. So we'll compile it with G++. Um, and then we'll go ahead and call the output inheritance and let's go ahead and run it and you see that the size of stood string is 32 bytes the size of parent which just contains a single data member that stood string is 32 bytes and the size of child is 64 bytes right we've got two stood strings here it ends up being 64 bytes um, in this case compiled on this machine um, and then you see you know we, we go ahead and just use our print methods here so we print out some names and then also favorite toy FPGA so that's going to go ahead and do it for this uh, example. It's a brief introduction to inheritance in C++. As always, feel free to check out any of these uh, or any of this content at github.com slash coffeebeforearch. So it can all be found at C++ Crash Course under Fundamental Concepts and then under Objects. We have a, uh, a section on inheritance right here. So feel free to download this, play around with it, let me know if you have any questions. And as always, I'm Nick, and hope you have a nice day.